this video we're going to have a look at how to name the alcohols and they are a class of compound that contain the hydroxyl functional group which is an oxygen and a hydrogen bonded to a carbon. Uh, when naming the alcohols what we need to remember is that the suffix or the end of the name is going to be changed to anol uh, and for reference let's include that small table of our stem names which relates to the number of carbons in the main chain of the compound. So let's take a look at some examples. Uh, right, there's my hydroxyl group on the right hand side, so it's definitely going to be an alcohol. So the first thing we need to do is count the number of carbons in the main chain. In this case, it's one, two. So the stem part of my name is going to be ETH. Let's write that down. And because it's an alcohol, it's going to end with anol. So in this case, it's going to be ethanol. Now you notice we haven't put any numbers in here. Uh, if I were to number my carbons, I would put one and two so that my OH is on the first carbon. So technically, I could put ethanol. However, if the hydroxide was on the other side of my molecule, I would label that number uh, carbon one. Um, and it would be exactly the same thing. So for that reason, we technically don't need any numbers in this case. Let's have a look at a second example. Uh, again, there's my hydroxyl functional group sticking off the side. I haven't showed the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen just to keep things a bit neater. So let's first count the number of carbons in the main chain there. I've got one, two, three, four. So the stem part of my name is going to be bute. So let's write that down. I've got bute. Now, instead of putting anol on the end directly, because that hydroxide, which currently is there, could also be on an end carbon, uh, we're going to need to put a little bit more detail about specifically where that um, hydroxyl group is. And to do so, the mistake would be to label left to right and find it on the third carbon, because what we always need to do is label things so that my functional group is as close to the beginning of the chain as possible. So I'm going to label them from right to left, one, two, three, four. In that case, it's on the second carbon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put butan and then two for the second carbon, ol, butan to ol. Third example. Okay, we've got a bit of a side chain sticking off here. So let's first of all identify my main carbon chain, which includes the functional group. So one, two, three. So the stem part of my name is going to be prop. So I would expect to see that prop. And specifically, uh, to give a bit more information on where that OH is, because I've got three different carbons, uh, let's label the first one, number one, two, three. So again, I've done it right to left so that my OH is the beginning of my chain and not the end of it. So that would be propan one ol. However, the extra bit that we need to take into account here is there is a CH3 group or a methyl group sticking off the second carbon. So whenever there's a, an alkyl group like this methyl group, that's going to go at the front of the name. So I'm going to put two methyl propan one ol. Example number four, uh, ooh, slightly tricky looking one again. Let's first of all um, identify my main carbon chain. Uh, a common mistake here would be to go one, two, three carbons. Actually, if I go back and count again, I want to find the longest line of carbons. It doesn't have to be in a straight line. So I could go one, two, three, four. Four is going to give me the stem name of bute. So let's put bute. Uh, which carbon is it on? Well, if I label my carbons with that as number one, two, three, four, that's going to keep my OH group on carbon number one. If I did it the other way around, it would be on carbon number four, but we always want to keep those numbers as small as possible, so I'm going to label it from left to right. So we've got butan one ol. And then what's the extra bit we need to make sure to include? Well, I've got, again, a methyl group sticking off my second carbon in the chain. So this is going to be 2-methyl-butan-1-ol. Final example, slightly more complex. Why is it complex? Well, this time I've got a hydroxyl group. I've got two hydroxyl groups, one on, each, uh, one on either carbon. So in this case, let's count my carbons. I've got one, two. doesn't matter which way around I number them because it's a symmetrical molecule. So let's just go left to right, one, two. So in this case, uh, it's going to be, what's the stem name? Well, it's two carbons, so it's going to be ETH. 
So I'm going to have ethan, and then I want to indicate where both of those hydroxyl functional groups are. So I'm going to have to put one, two, and because there are two of them, I need to put di before finishing off with ol. Ethan, one, two, di, ol. And that's about it for alcohols. Hopefully this video was of some help.